In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about infinite limits. And these are limits where your value or the, the y value that you approach is either going to be positive infinity or negative, negative infinity. And that typically occurs around our vertical asymptotes. And when we graphed rational functions near, um, months ago, we talked about vertical behavior. You know, does the function approach positive infinity or negative infinity near the asymptote? You know, remember, we found the asymptotes, and then we substituted in a value really close to the asymptote on each side of that asymptote. And it's, it's similar to what we did up here, where we substituted a value close to 2 on either side of 2 because the limit was as x approaches 2. So we're going to use that same concept with our vertical behavior here. So it says find the vertical asymptotes and the vertical behavior at those asymptotes. Well, the asymptotes occur when the denominator is 0. So what makes um, x equals, or what makes this equal 0 is positive 1. So our vertical asymptote is at x equals 1. And to calculate our vertical behavior, we would do something like 0.9, f of 0.9, and then we do f of 1.1. And we substitute in 0 0.9, 0 0.9 minus 1 squared. And we didn't really need, we didn't really care if it was po uh, what the value was. We just cared was it positive or was it negative. So it'd be 1 over 0 0.1, uh, sorry, negative 0.1 squared, which would be give us a positive value, right? 1 over. Um, a negative squared. Well, the negative squared is going to be a positive number, so we know it's going to give us a positive result. Then for f of 1.1, okay, 1 over 1.1 minus 1 squared equals 1 over 0.1 squared. Okay, so 0.1 squared is a positive number. A positive over a positive give us a positive answer. So we know that both ends of this asymptote, the function is going upwards to positive infinity because we get positive values when we substitute numbers in on both sides of it. Then letter B, our asymptote, vertical asymptote is x equals positive 1. So again, we're going to substitute a value on each side of it, of, of positive 1. So negative 1 over, and we have x, oops, which is 1 minus 0 0.9. Well, the numerator is going to be negative, and the denominator is going to be positive, so that gives us a negative value. So the left side of that asymptote goes down. So then the right side of the asymptote, 1 Point 0.1 minus 1. So we have negative 1 over negative 0.1. So this should be point 0.1. So we have negative 1 over negative 0.1. Negative over negative becomes positive. So the right side of this function goes up to positive infinity. So we're going to use that to write and evaluate one sided limits using that vertical behavior. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left oops, from the left side of f of x. Well, did the left side go up or go down? The left side went up to positive infinity. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side will be positive infinity then the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side or the right side, okay, it was a positive value, so it's going to go up to positive infinity. And then for letter B, 
the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of f of x. Well, the left side went down, so it's going to be, the limit's going to approach negative infinity. And then the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side, the positive side of f of x, that's positive infinity because we got a positive value here. So this vertical behavior idea translates or leads itself to writing our, our one-sided limits. So because the one and letter A approach positive infinity from the left and right side, you could just write it as a single limit. You know, the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is positive infinity. You couldn't combine them for letter B because they approach different infinities, one positive, one negative. Right, so now let's look at example two. Find the vertical asymptotes and the limit as x approaches those asymptotes. So we want to factor first because remember asymptotes only occur at those factors that we can't cancel out. So yeah, the denominator can factor to x minus 2 and x plus 2, but that doesn't mean there's an asymptote at positive 2 and negative 2. Because if we factor the numerator, okay, we have x squared plus 2x minus 8. So we have x plus 4 and x minus 2. So these cancel, and we're left with x plus 4 over x plus 2. So our vertical asymptote is that x equals negative 2. At x equals positive 2, there would be a hole in the graph not an asymptote. All right, so we're going to substitute values on both sides, so negative 2.1 and f of negative 1.9. Now, negative 2.1 is smaller than negative 2, so that's the left side. So now we're going to do negative 2.1 plus 4 over negative 2.1 plus 2. And again, we don't really care about what the value is. We just care if it's positive or negative. The numerator, negative 2.1 plus 4, yes, you could calculate that if you wanted to, but we know it's going to be a positive number. Negative 2.1 plus 2, we know is going to be a negative number, so that means it's going to equal ne a negative value when we um, divide it out. Again, we don't really care what that value is. We just care about the sign of it. Is it positive or negative? Right, the negative 1.9, negative 1.9 plus 4 over negative 1.9 plus 2. The numerator is still going to be positive because 4 is bigger than oh, negative 1.9. And then 2 is bigger than negative 1.9. So it's also going to be positive. So it's going to give us a positive result. So the left side is going down and the right side is going up. So we can write that as the limit as x approaches um, negative 2. Oops, let me rewrite that. Negative 2 from the left side of f of x is equal to negative infinity. And now the right side is going up to positive infinity, so the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right side is positive infinity. So they're going in opposite directions, so we have to keep it as a one-sided limit. We could not combine them into a two-sided limit. All right, now letter B. With letter B, I'm going to factor this for you. And then I'm going to let you try to, to finish it on your own. x squared plus 1 cannot be factored. But the denominator x squared minus 1 can be factored to x minus 1 times x plus 1. So we can't cancel anything out here. So that means we have two vertical asymptotes. And you're going to have to find the vertical behavior uh, on both sides of both asymptotes. So go ahead, pause the video.
try it out, and then once you're done, unpause it and see if we get the same answer. All right, so here are the vertical behaviors and the corresponding one-sided limits. Um, now, 0.9 squared and negative 0.9 squared, that's going to give you a number smaller than 1. So when you subtract it by 1, then it's going to be a negative value. And again, if you don't uh, aren't able to do that logically or in your head uh, to decide if it's positive or negative, just throw it into the calculator and see if you get a positive or negative value. And then remember, positive over positive gives you a positive. Negative over negative gives you positive. But if they have uh, different signs, when we divide it, it's going to be negative. So um, then the limits, if we approach a positive value, is going to be the uh, limit is going to approach positive infinity. If we approach, uh, if it's a negative value, then the limit approaches negative infinity. So again, we have to make sure we're careful with substituting things in and squaring them correctly. Um, always put parentheses around, especially negative numbers and you should be fine. So thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe.